Let us now explore Pythagorean property. Complete the following table of Pythagorean triples and describe the patterns. I am Anil Kumar and in this video we will learn how to get those magical whole numbers which can be side of right triangle. So what I am trying to say is that we are looking for a right triangle something like this whose sides are A, B and C. Let us say that the sides are a, B and C. As you know, the relation between them is what the Pythagorean property. This, that is the right angle. So we have A square plus B square equals to C square. By filling up this table, you will get a clue to find A, B and C so that they are sides of right triangle and their whole numbers. So with this example you'll come to know about all the whole numbers which could form a right triangle. So isn't that cool? Let's explore how. In the table we are given length of side A, length of side B and length of hypotenuse C. Let us say these are the sides A, B and C. We know if the sides are 3, 4 and 5, they form a right triangle since 3 square is how much? 9, right? 3 square, let me write down here A square, here I'll write B square and then let me write C square. So 3 square is 9, 4 square is 16 and C square is 25. Sum of these two is the square of C, right? Now, We'll try to fill up this table. You can use the calculator and find the missing value. Now in this case, side A is 5, side B is not known and side C, which is hypotenuse, is 13. Well, 13 square is 169, 5 square is 25. So if I take away 25 from 169, I get 144 and this number is square root of 144, right? This number should be 12. So let me write it in this color, 12. Okay, so we get the side. Now, the length has increased from 5 to 7. One of the sides is 24. You have to find out the hypotenuse. Well, you can do your math. The hypotenuse should be 7 square, right, plus 24 square, and then square root, right. So when you do that, you'll get a number which is 25. Now, how did I get it? I didn't really calculate that. I used my patterns to find it out. Well, you can also explore some patterns here and figure out what number should come here. When 9 is one of the sides, what whole numbers could be the other two sides of right triangle? These set of numbers are called Pythagorean triples, right? The three whole numbers which form sides of right triangle. Well, let me tell you, the answer is that this number is 40 and the other number is 41. Well, I know the answer, but I got it using a pattern rule. Can you figure out a pattern rule? Let's explore. Let me do what is 7 square. 7 square is 49 and 9 square is 81, correct? We know this, correct? 3 square is 9, 5 square 25, 7 square is 49, 9 square is 81. Now, do you notice how this square is related with the other two sides? Hmm, there, there you see a pattern. We find that A square is actually equal to B plus C, right? 4 plus 5 is 9. A square equals to B plus C. So this is one pattern which we notice. 25. 25 is indeed equal to 12 plus 13, you are right. 49 is equal to 24 plus 25 and I guessed these values. 81 is equal to 40 
plus 41. So this is one of the very interesting patterns which I noticed and now you also know it, right? That's right. Now how do you get this number 40? We know a square is sum of these two numbers. How do you get these two numbers? You'll also notice one more thing that how is C related with B? Well, we find that C is B plus 1. C is just one more than B, right? 5 is 4 plus 1, 13 is 12 plus 1, 24 plus 1 is 25, 40 plus 1 is 41. So we know that C is equal to B plus 1, correct? Now that makes it simple. So now we can figure out the pattern, correct? So the next should be what? So in our series of A's, we are going up by 2's, right? 3, 5, 7, 9, next number should be 11, right? Now 11 square is what? 11 square is 121, right? 121. So two numbers which when added should give me 121. And difference of these two numbers should be what? Just 1. So those two numbers are of course 60 and 61. So that is how we get the three sides. Do you get the idea? Well, try it on your own. If the number is 13, we know 13 square is how much? Square of 13 is 169. 169, correct? Now the two numbers should be what? So that is for you to figure out. Of course, the difference between them should be just by one number, correct? So, what are those two numbers? So that we get 13 square plus that number square equals to this number square, right? So, what is half of 169? That kind of gives you the answer. The number on either side of that half is your answer, right? So, 168 divide by 2 because you know C is one more than B, right? So 168 divide by 2. So if I have 168 divide by 2, 16 divide by 2 is 8 and 8 divide by 2 is 4. The number should be 84 and 85. Well, does that work? This is what you have to figure out, right? Let us check. What is 85 square? 85 square is equals to 7225. So we get this as 85 square equals to 7225. Now what is 84 square? 84 square is equals to, let me write down here in blue ink, 7056. So if I add these two, do I get that? Let me add plus 169 is equal to 7225. Wow, it works, correct? So I think you got the patterns. The side lengths A's are kind of uh, 2n plus 1, right? So we can say A is uh, kind of, let me write down, all A's are 2 times n plus 1. n is any number, right? Any whole number. If n is 1, we get 2 times 1 as 2, 2 plus 1 is 3. If n is 2, we get 5, 7, 9, 11, and so on. Correct? And we found that a square is equal to sum of b and c, where c is 1 more than b. Now, this set of rules help you to get all the possible Pythagorean triplets. I hope that's very exciting. And you must be feeling good about knowing key to find Pythagorean triples. I'm Anil Kumar. You can subscribe to my videos and learn many interesting things like this. Thank you and all the best.